What is going on guys? So today we are going to be taking a look at two new item sets coming out in update 37, also known as Scribes of the Fate DLC. Now this is week one of the PTS, so I want to say this very, very clearly. We are a long ways away from the live server. A lot of things can change. They could buff this set, they could nerf this set. Who knows? But as it says right now, I want to explain kind of how these sets function and how they work so you guys have a better idea of, of you know, if you maybe want to use them on your builds or give you some ideas for new builds that you can try with these sets. Now the first set, Snakes of the Stars. I was kind of impatient on kind of how this thing was going to perform but let me tell you this set is probably the best dot set we have in the game currently this thing far exceeded my expectations and it will be a meta set if remain unchanged currently the other one i wanted to talk about was rune carver's blaze this one i thought was going to be a lot stronger than it is but it kind of fell on its face and just didn't perform to the degree that i thought it was going to now let's go over rune carvers first so i can kind of get this out there and how this set functions and works because this was a, a, a very um important set that i thought was going to be one of the strongest in the next patch however it's just not as strong so it gives you damage damage and then offensive pen and then your damage over time effects deal an additional 1933 flame damage on the third damage tick the damage scales off of your weapon or spell damage and always applies the burning status effect so the way i thought this set worked it was every third tick you would get a proc of rune carvers and that is not true you only get one instance of rune carvers so if i come over here and hit noxious breath there's one or well here's one tick two tick and then three ticks and then boom after that it will deal damage and dots but it will no longer proc the rune carver set so it's on each individual skill so what that means is the burning talons has its own original own iteration of rune carvers noxious breath has has its own iteration venom claw has its own iteration consuming trap has its own iteration so if we were to you know hit all these skills right now rune carvers is going to proc pretty consistently but it only occurs uh after after three ticks and that's it so it's kind of lackluster in that degree that if you're always reapplying your dots it's going to be like strong but you're probably just better off using a different set or using the set that I talked about called Snakes in the Stars. Now I've extensively tested this set on a few different builds and my gosh, I am blown away by this set. I was very intrigued by it. I just didn't know how it was gonna function um, because it, has, it still says danger damage on the tooltip. However, it is considered oblivion damage, which goes through, um, you know, like, it, so let me explain this. Let me take a step back. This set is insane. So the reason why it's so strong is a danger damage and oblivion damage. You cannot mitigate, but you cannot buff it either. It gets no buffs from vulnerabilities, from penetration, nothing. So it's basically how, how, how I best can describe this is it slows 2.0. If you guys remember what slows was, this is like slows 2.0. Probably not as strong as original Slodes, but it still has a lot of potential. Now, this set, I think, deals 2848 dot damage on the target uh, in PvP. So I want to notate that very clearly in PvP. So 2848, I do believe, is the dot pressure. So in total, in PvP, you're going to be dealing 17,088 damage with this set if they are healing every second. That is insane. The pressure on this set is is crazy. It has a 50% uptime. It is not going to be like, you know, up all the time. It's up half the time. Um, but the pressure that it provides you is just obnoxious. You're talking about full builds that, you know, that if they are healing then that's when this set does massive damage. So applying a major buff or deep or minor debuff to an enemy applies star venom for to them for six seconds. So a major or minor debuff consists of a wide variety of skills. You can go just the basic ones of major breach and minor breach are going to be the most accessible. But there's also other variations like major vulnerability, minor vulnerability, um, major defile, minor defile, that sort of thing. This effect can occur once every 12 seconds. Whenever an enemy with Star Venom is healed, they take damage 
uh, danger damage, but it's also oblivion, uh, up to once per second. An enemy can only be affected by one instance of Star Venom at a time. So that they, that makes this set pretty balanced to that degree. Is Star Venom only works whenever they... It just works on just one person. So if you, you cannot be afflicted by multiple instances of Star Venom, which is definitely a good thing. I can imagine you just roasting and dying in three seconds with that. So it doesn't proc... Well, it will proc on, on like this NPC. It's the, you know, the, the green glowy thing, but it doesn't do um, like any damage, like because the, this thing can't heal. So keep that in mind. But if it could heal, it would be dealing 2848 damage and it is considered direct damage. It's not going to look like a dot effect. I've been testing this and dueling on it with like for like several hours and the pressure this thing provides is insane. Um, it doesn't look crazy by any means, but whenever you consider it's oblivion damage and you can't mitigate it, and it's based off of their healing uh, kit, so if they're hitting Resolving Vigor, well, guess what? They're getting hit by Star Venom. It doesn't matter. Every single tick, they will get healed and, and, and Star Venom's dealing damage. So it basically kind of counters the healing meta we've been in for quite a while. I don't think it does everything that it's supposed to. Like, so if somebody's using Mars Bomb against this, it basically just cancels each other out and it makes it to where yeah mars bomb you're a little bit more squishy and and if you don't have access to the cleanse then this set is definitely going to be roasting you quite a bit but with all the duration effects kind of kind of ending and allowing for mars bomb to heal it kind of cancels each other out if however you are not using mars bomb and you're going up against snake and the stars and you're not like a new meta magzork, you're going to be taking a lot of damage and it's going to be obnoxious. So I want to notate that, notate that very clearly is Mars Bomb is really the only counter to this set. And that's concerning to me because it's now going to force people to run Mars Bomb even more than the ones that are currently are right now. So that is definitely worrying. I think they need to, they need to address Mars Bomb like yesterday. This set, I was surprised that it wasn't nerfed in this PTS cycle. I hope and pray that Star's Venom doesn't get nerfed to the degree where Mars Bomb just completely outweighs it and makes it useless. So I have a few ideas. I think that you could adjust Snake in the Stars to make it more potent against healing because that's the problem. Heal stacking and having so many different types of healing effects is the main problem in PvP. One iteration, an idea I have, is to make it's where maybe star venom has a 25 percent uptime maybe not 50 percent. that's definitely way too long um maybe two seconds three seconds something like that but but each iteration of healing that you received in that duration you're taking damage it doesn't have a one second cooldown it has no cooldowns so if you're getting mars bomb heals you're getting vigor heals you're getting vines heals on the warden you're getting radiant regeneration heals from other people each tick of healing generates a tick of snake in the stars now you obviously need to decrease the oblivion damage maybe to something like a thousand maybe 1200 but each instance of healing is going to make this have insane pressure so you're going to reduce the uptime on it but you're going to make it to where it can occur more than one time a second so if you're hitting you know something like vigor and coag right that's going to have two iterations of star snakes in the stars, which is going to do 2k damage, for example. I don't know the exact number, but that's just presenting an idea. Now, that may be way too strong for certain instances, but for the vast majority of people that don't have Mars Bomb, it's not going to be that, that more potent uh, of a deal. Actually, it would make it more bearable on those builds rather than having to be forced to run Mars Bomb just to be able to survive against this set. That's my kind of idea how, how I would adjust it. Um, but if this set is nerfed in any way, shape, form, or fashion, uh, Mars Bomb will definitely tip the needle uh, of being way overperforming uh, compared to this set. But that is just some of my ideas on how I would balance it. I think this set definitely is going to be very interesting to test and try. We're only on day one of the PTS, guys, so there is probably far more builds out there than the ones I've tested. Um, but any dot focus build, and this is something else I wanted to, to kind of end off here, the dot meta looks like it's turn, turning around and coming back. The dot meta, especially with sets that come out that make dots so strong, where you're already in kind of a weird kind of time frame where 
dots hit hard, but they don't have as much burst as they used to. And where you have a lot of people now running Mars Bomb, I know dots are a direct, like, are countered by Mars Bomb, but it's honestly the only thing that can pressure Mars Bomb is with dots. I mean, you're talking about a burst heal whenever you get six negative effects on you, and it's so easy to, you know, get the healing from it. But the only class that really, or the only builds that can really pressure, pressure Mars is with dots. So I understand that Mars is is at the epitome of, of mitigation and survivability and healing potential. But with this set, it's oblivion damage. So this kind of allows you to have pressure that goes through shields. It goes through right through your health bar. It doesn't have a care in the world for your resistances. It doesn't care about how much health you have. Whatever the case is, this set will put a lot of pressure on your target to make it to where that they have to play defensive. But here's the thing, the more healing that they do to themselves, the more damage they're taking from Star Venom. So it's kind of like a catch 22. However, this set can be cleansed. So that's something that's to notate is it's not like Plague Break where if you cleanse it, you're taking burst damage. I, I could see some iterations of some builds with Star Venom and Plague Break to kind of counterbalance that and make sure that they're taking damage um, if they do cleanse of those certain effects. And I, I could see Star Venom and Plague Break to be kind of used to counter the Mars bomb meta. Uh, that's just some ideas and some concepts that I do have uh, and I wanted to share with you guys. But I'm telling you guys, Star Venom looks like one of the best sets to come out next patch if it releases in its current state. But that's gonna be it for me guys. Be on the lookout for all my PTS videos. We're gonna be deep diving over the next few weeks. Um, and week three of the PTS is typically when we get most of the balance changes where pretty much all of those things go live. So we're going to be working our way up towards that point, and I'll definitely let you know if anything changes. That's going to be it for me, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.